So in today's video, I got something a little bit unusual for you guys. This is a two-cylinder opposed piston. So the pistons, there's two pistons on top, two pistons on the bottom that come up and meet in the middle for the combustion chamber. Model engine that somebody handmade back in probably the 40s, judging by how it's made. And in today's video, we're going to see if we can get this thing running. The first thing I want to do with it before I just try and hook up a battery and coil to it and see if it'll run is I want to take this crankcase apart and see what's holding it together. From the outside, I see no major structural components holding this whole crankcase together. So I want to make sure there's some actual bearings and stuff inside this thing. There is signs of them having it running. There's a little bit of black in the exhaust ports on the cylinders, but there isn't a lot. And as of right now, there isn't any major compression because I can hear it leaking by the top cylinders here. So I might have to put some different kind of rings or O-rings in this to get it to run right. But the first thing I'm going to do is tear it down a little ways, make sure it's structurally sound so I don't have it blow up in my face. I'd prefer to keep it in one piece. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to go grab a screwdriver and we're going to start by taking this whole cylinder assembly off and we'll see how everything goes from there. Upon taking the screws out of the side cover, I realized there's five screws holding it on through the oil pan, so I ended up having to take the engine off its base to get to them. This base is one of the few things on this engine that isn't homemade, and if you have any idea what it's from, please let me know in the comments down below. So after tearing it down, I found out I couldn't really see much from the top of the block. So I ended up coming in from the side of the block where you're seeing from now. I have to say, whoever made this had a lot of thought into it. Because there's a lot going on in here. I don't know how well you guys can see it on these connecting rods on the end, but there's little handcrafted scoops to scoop oil up even, which is just impressive. Now the end of this screwdriver is 3 16 probably and around, and there it is next to the tip of that screwdriver. Those things are small. It's quite impressive how well they made this. As for the structural integrity of this thing, I'm, I'm gonna say it's fine to run it, but I ain't gonna say it's nothing special. There's big brass blocks on the edges of the crank here that are just soldered and bolted to the actual sheet metal crankcase. So all that's really holding this whole thing together is the sheet metal on the outside, which isn't ideal, but there's at least a bearing surface in here. So I feel a little bit better just running it the way it is. With all that being said, I think I'm gonna put back together and see what we got for compression. Maybe it'll run with what it has. If it doesn't, we'll put some O-rings in it, see what it does. 
All right, I got it back together. I put some fuel in the gas tank. This guy made his own carburetor with its own float bowl. Basically, the only thing in the carburetor that isn't homemade is this float is out of some other carburetor. It's just kind of fascinating how much time and effort the guy put into this, but let's see if this float system still works or if it ever did. I'll turn the gas on now. He put the needle sideways so it got stuck. If I snap it, there we go. It's filling up. So we got fuel. I'm going to go get a battery and we'll hook her up and see what we get. I got a cordless drill with a little adapter on it because this thing came with a ratchet on one output shaft. For now, I just have a piece of bar with a flat cut in it. I got a battery. I got a coil hooked up back here and let's see if it'll fire off. if it's not enough compression or what its problem is. Not getting spark. I'm gonna blame my coil because my coil is an old coil. So I'm gonna go get a newer coil. Okay, I questioned my coil, so I replaced the coil. I mean, after all, I was using this thing. It's quite aged. So I went and got a new coil. Hopefully that'll fix it. Then I second guessed my battery, so I got a different battery. Hook those all up, and I think we might be set now. Hopefully. I'm hoping we get something. That's way more probable. That's a lot better reaction. I'm... <laughs> I've been messing with this thing for about a half hour because I kept getting spark when I checked the spark plug, but it must have not worked with something when it was spinning. I think I might need to just try and replace those rings and see what happens. I just have to drool over these chains again here quick. Just look at these. Every single pin, every single link, every single roller, every single little bit of every piece of this chain has been made by hand. Every little piece of it. Even if you ignore the chain, these gears. Handmade. There's no like proper gear cutter used. All hand file. It's just gorgeous. Even back then, if this was made in like the 40s, there was generic chain you could have put on this thing. But no, he went to the extra length. Each one is custom cut. There's no die or anything. They're each different slightly. And there's got to be a few hundred of them on each side. And then there's another set of gears on the other side for the distributor. It's just spectacular. Out of all the stuff on this engine, he definitely didn't skip out on making chain. It's just gorgeous. All right, so I put some O-rings in it instead of piston rings. I found out that the actual piston rings that were in it, these little guys right here, a lot of these don't really have any spring left in them. Now, I don't know if that's because they got this thing running, it got hot enough, it untempered them, or if they didn't temper these correctly when they made them, because these are all homemade rings. Either way, I put some O-rings in it on the top and the bottom. It's got a lot more compression now, so I think we'll actually get some better results. There's still a leak somewhere. I haven't narrowed it down. I think it's one of the valves. Before I took the video of this thing, we were curious what it had for valves in it. So we took one of these plugs out and uh, the valves are just screws. So having a leaky valve is not that surprising to me, but it doesn't leak too bad. It's got compression now. So hopefully it'll actually run. That's a lot more promising than it was earlier.
Since this doesn't have any cooling on it, I'm going to get you guys a close-up shot of these valves, hopefully, so I can get at least a little bit of up-close footage of this thing before it gets hot and I can't run it anymore for the video. And we'll see what it looks like up close. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. It runs pretty good, really, for as long as it stays cool. Once it starts warming up, I did notice it'll start to kind of friction lock because everything expands and gets tight on it. You can only run it for about a minute or less, and then it gets really hot and it won't really turn right, which kind of is expected considering there's no cooling whatsoever in it. But yeah, I think it's a pretty cool little model. You don't see stuff like this very often where somebody makes a four-stroke engine from scratch, let alone if it functions. And then whoever this was back in the day, it's kind of surprising they took the bold attempt to make a posed piston engine. There's a lot of work into this. It's pretty cool, so I figured I'd make a short little video on getting it going and show it to the rest of the world. If you like this video, leave a like down below. If you didn't, I don't think you would have made it this far. If you want to see more content like this, please think about subscribing. I try to upload something every other week. But yeah, it's pretty cool. See you in the next video.